This episode of Dollars and Cents is brought to you by Liberty Puerto Rico, RSM Puerto Rico, Oriental, and Amy Taylor voiceovers. With us today is Jorge Perez, Regional Manager of ASM Global, the company that manages and operates the Puerto Rico Coliseum, the Convention District, the Antiguo Casino, and the recently opened Coca-Cola Music Hall, which I hear is spectacular. Thank you for being with us today. No, Appreciate it. Thank you for having me. Thank you. So, more than 14 months after the government declared a lockdown that, you know, kind of brought everything to a standstill to curb the spread of the COVID-19 virus um, and kept venues, you know, entertainment venues closed pretty much to the public, right? Now restrictions, actually today, restrictions are being eased to move ahead with a restart of operations, um, even though they may be gradually, they're starting to happen, right? And so... That said, coliseums and convention facilities may now hold events at reduced capacity, right? Mm -hmm. So what does that mean, you know, for resuming operations in Puerto Rico? Well, we're extremely delighted to hear the news. Um, It's been 15 months uh, of unprecedented uh, situation. We we usually during most of the uh, economic downturns or recessions, uh, entertainment is one of the sectors that that has always holds strong, and um, this one really hit us hard because uh, COVID nineteen predicates exactly the opposite of we represent. We we represent gathering people, Rams. having people yeah. have fun times in our in our in our venues, memorable moments, and 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 this is total the total contrary. So social distancing. Um, that's the reason why we we were the only industry that was fully closed um, for this whole period. So we're, we're delighted. Uh, it'll be a gradual process. We the, the most important part in this stage is to get confidence back, right. to have the people feel confident that they can come into our venues. Uh, we, we've been preparing since day one. Once this um, COVID nineteen uh, the lockdowns were announced, and we we kind of knew what. The oh, gravity coming. of the right. situation. Right. We, the, our main goal from that moment was to prepare for the reopening, for a safe, safe reopening. So that was our main um, mission since day one. And certainly we, we're, we're very close to reopening. And, and, and I think having people um, feel confident of going back into large areas. Because some people say, well, you know, for restaurants... They, they don't require uh, a negative test or they don't require evidence of vaccination, but it's, it's very different. We, Why? We, I was going to ask you that. I mean, how, and how are you going to make sure that, you know, that you comply with that requirement? Sure, because in a, in a restaurant setting um, with social distancing, maybe you're talking about 50 or 60 people under one roof at the same time. With social distancing at our venue, say uh, Coliseo de Puerto Rico, we're talking about 5,000, 6,000 people. So it, it's a very different ball game when you have 5,000, 6,000 people gar- gathering for the first time in, in, you know, in over 15 months. In a closed environment. In a closed environment. Mm-hmm. So I, I think it's a very um, important to, to get that, like I keep repeating, confidence back. So we, having the requirement of um, the vaccination or the negative results of, of a PCR tests are, are crucial to get that confidence and get over that big first hump, which we are now, we'll verify um, more at the point of entrance. Because that's that's where the check happens, That's where right? the checkpoint will be because I, I can get online I, to Ticketera, which is our mm-hmm. ticketing platform, and I can buy six tickets, for example. Mm-hmm. I can give those six tickets away. I, right. I, I can give them as a gift, and that doesn't necessarily mean that if we check that the ticket right. purchaser is, you know, Tested. complies with mm-hmm. any of those two, that um, that will be the end user. So... We'll have the checkpoint at the entrance, okay. and with the uh, temperature check and checking of those, uh, either one of those two, then you'll go to a second um, checkpoint. Uh-huh. A second checkpoint where that's where we'll do the um, metal detector and we'll do the regular check that everyone's accustomed to. Masks are still mandatory. Masks right? will be mandatory, correct? Okay. Now let's go back a little bit before we, you know, mm-hmm. go into what's coming up ahead. Um, over that year. Uh, what did that closed closing represent, you know, in terms of activity, economics, not only for the Puerto Rico Coliseum, which is a huge, you mm-hmm. know, huge venue and it's probably a huge impact, but what did it mean for the other venues? I mean, how many events were canceled? Do you know? 
overall on you know overall we we, we reprogram most of the schedules for example for coliseo the 30 or 40 uh, events that we had in the pipeline for the upcoming months were all rescheduled. Okay. Um, the, one of the most dif- difficult things in this was that we did not know at the beginning. We know more now, mm-hmm. but at the beginning, we didn't know. So right. it was very difficult. It was unprecedented. You know, we were still learning. I remember being asked, you know, when are you going to reopen? And at that time, I said, well, maybe we're looking at the summer. You know, this mm-hmm. was March. April, so you know, we we had no idea of the, you know the How magnitude. How naive were we, we, right? Exactly, we knew it was something bad because the whole world locked down. When I saw, saw the news and I saw the Disney, NBA, and all those were shutting down, I said, "This is this is major, major." Mm-hmm. So at the beginning, we we didn't know. I remember talking to my boss in Los Angeles, and he said, "Jorge, 2020, you're going to lose it completely." And I'm mm. like, "Wow!" I'm like, "You know, are you sure?" So he knew. Obviously, he knew. He, he had more vision. Um, but basically, so we, we had most of the events were rescheduled and there, we're still rescheduling because now when we have an opening date, so so now the executive order allows us to open. Um, the first event will be at the end of June and then it'll just be a, a domino effect with, with the rest of the producers. So do you think 2021 is, is full? Like for the like at least the last yeah, six months of the Yeah, probably from August, uh, mm-hmm. Q3 and Q4 mm-hmm. uh, will be pretty booked. Um, okay. Mostly with a lot of local shows. We have um, some international shows that actually I signed uh, an agreement this morning with a you know a popular... And are you going to let uh, us know what it is? <laughs> with a popular saying, I have to get the uh, yeah, approval the, from okay. the producer. Well, but, we uh, tried, we tried. But we <laughs> have... Um, so we have... Okay. This one has been... This was on schedule for April, May of 2020. So we've been moving this, you know... Mm-hmm. We've moved it like five or six times. So, uh, but there's a lot of momentum. There's a lot of positive, um, uh, positives in, in, in the industry. The promoters are starting to call again. And oh, like I said, okay. it was very difficult for them to schedule or reschedule when, when we didn't have a starting point. We, we didn't have point A for, for anything. So now that we do, the, you know, it's people, uh, producers, a lot of pu- public, general public is calling to ask for questions. So, now the you know the snowball effect is 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 beginning. So we're 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 we feel very good about where we are. So that's at the Coliseum. What about the the people who had tickets? Um, you know, for the events that were postponed um, in 2019 and 2020. Well, w- one of the major indicators that we look at is the percentage of um, reimbursement requests uh, for tickets. So in Puerto Rico, we we've we've had 75 percent of people who purchase tickets for Coliseo have held on to their tickets. So okay. that's a very positive sign. It means that people are anxious. There's a pent up demand uh, that, you know, that's going to be um, crucial in our reestablishing our, our operations. Mm-hmm. So um, people are holding on to their tickets. They want to come back. They want to see live entertainment. So that's very positive. Now, you know, the, the condition to reopening is a reduced capacity, right? So these events that, you know, you sold at full capacity, how are you going to distribute, you know, the audiences? Are you going to have more than one show or are you working with producers? Yeah. What's happening with that? We're working with the producers hand in hand. Um, there's some some shows that may have to have a second night or maybe even a third night, but it, it's very um, premature now because okay. there's events that are later on in the year that we still don't know what the, what the what the executive order at that moment will mm-hmm, allow. Mm-hmm. So we're working with the producers. Um, we're planning on what we have today, and hopefully we'll have increases. Hopefully on the next executive order, uh, an increase will be um, included. So we're okay. just, I mean, it's like everything with COVID, um, it's day by day. Uh, we have to adjust quickly to changes. So um, basically that's the And that's scenario. the other thing. This Actually, this executive order is for two weeks. So, you know, and the governor said if he sees a spike, then he's, you know. He'll go down he and go, if everything is going well, back. he might go up. Right. So, okay. So this is kind of touch and go. What about the other uh, venues? The Coca-Cola Music Hall, the um, the convention center, which is key to group events, right? And Absolutely. the Antiguo Casino. Can we talk a little bit about each one of them and sure. what's going on? Um, convention center. Um, out of all the inventory uh, and all the um, space that we manage, the convention center is the one that has has been used the most. Um, mm-hmm. Way at the beginning of uh, COVID, um, there was a 
grant. There's this program called uh, Farmers to Families. It's oh, a USDA yes. program. Yes. And a, a, a local um, company called um, Caribbean Produce, Produce uh -huh. um, got that bid. Um, and they came to our facility, and they were there for many months, and they used it as an assembly line and distribution mm -hmm. center. So they were producing almost 30,000 uh, food boxes per day at our venue. So... Mm -hmm. um, our venue was used in a positive way, and, and we, we were able to have some income to keep employees on staff. Uh, after that, the Department of Labor came in, and they used our uh, facilities for two months uh, as a support center for the high volume of um, unemployment applications. Uh, unemployment applications. Yeah. So that was also, um, you know, they paid rent, and that also helped us keep, um, keep income keep going, coming and right. and. and, and you know, having our staff uh, affected the least possible. So when that happened, we went to the government and we said, listen, we, we've done these two events, uh, type of activities. We can hold um, business meetings. There's no reason why we can't do um, corporate events. So they gave us a special permit at that mm -hmm. time. Uh, mm -hmm. So we kept doing um, corporate events and uh, business meetings. So you know, the, the so that one didn't take a hit. Then the convention center it's the one did that's, it remain open. The, the one, the, yeah, the, it partially open, okay. but we have and now we have the uh, the um, data center for all the vaccination um, information that, that occurs at all the vaccination sites around the island comes into the convention center. Uh, they have a data entry center mm -hmm. there, so that's where they're keeping all the statistics on on vaccination. So that'll um, they've been there since March. So we've we've done pretty well. Um, okay. The flexibility of our building. Um, you the, do have smaller rooms too, we, so we, you can have correct. You can split up events, right? I mean, exactly. So um, the Antigua Casino has been completely closed. I actually, we've already done four weddings. Oh, okay. So which is had, what what is typically used for, right? That yes, we had a destination so wedding two weeks ago, which is uh, this couple from Texas. They brought in 130 people. Okay. Um, we had all the permits and. Uh, they had a great time in Puerto Rico, so they, they kept their commitment to Puerto Rico, and they, they had an amazing wedding. And we've had other three three other local um, weddings. So the Antiguo Casino, as of like three weeks ago, has been operating. Okay. The Coca-Cola Music Hall as well. We, we are a performance hall. We are a concert hall. Mm -hmm. um, but we've had to survive, and we've done a lot of corporate events, like the one that's taking place today. Right. And uh, we've had... Um, product launches and we've had meetings and, and corporate meetings so that's been in use as well so we've been we've kept pretty busy um, and you also have a first artist lined up right for, for the yeah opening? we have um we have um we don't have a date yet but uh, okay. Anita Nazario mm -hmm. was going to be our first uh, yeah, event remember. back in March 2020 uh, so you know we're we're still in conversations with with her team to to have that first concert but we the Coca-Cola Music Hall is a bit different because it's a new venue. So we want to have a grand opening. Mm -hmm. and, and and we don't want the grand opening to be with 300, 400, 500 people. So with the Coca-Cola Music Hall, we have to wait a little bit more to have that grand opening night. I see. Okay. And there's no date for that? There's no date. What what we're going to do, we're going to have a series of preview concerts. We, we, we're thinking of having an open house, kind of a week where we'll have two or three um, concerts open to the public. Okay. With you know, with the, with capacity, the reduced what's with the, the what's the reduced capacity there? Right now, if we're at thirty percent, we're looking at four hundred, five hundred okay. people. Because um, it depends on how we arrange the seating. Mm -hmm. um, and the seating there is flexible, right? Correct. Okay. It's so. the the seating on the lower level um, can be moved, so we can we can we can have it on an open space like for festivals, which is not the preferable uh, mm -hmm, seating mm -hmm. for now because you have people just walking around a and then we have the seated um the seated uh diagram where, where mm -hmm. you have you know fixed seating okay now the coliseum was closed all this time it seems to me like that one and the antiguo casino uh, were pretty much closed right did how did you use the time i mean did you make improvements did you work on you know what what did you do yeah um Right at the beginning, we, we, we went to the Puerto Rico Convention Center District Authority and we said, listen, we're going to be closed for a few months. Like I said, we, we really know it was gonna, didn't know it was, it was going to be this long. And, and we said, we have a lot of capital projects that we've been trying to do for the past years. 
and this is the best moment to do it. And they understood. Um, they uh, shared our vision, and we, we got signed up close to six million dollars for the convention center, Coliseo, okay. and Antiguo Casino mm-hmm. to do capital projects, which were done or could have been implemented much easier when there's no um, visitors. Mm-hmm. So we we got that approved, and our operations department and our contractors have been very busy. So uh, we made sure to make all these repairs during the shutdown and during the uh, the rest of uh, 2020 so that when people come back, they'll find uh, new and improved buildings. So what kind of repairs are we talking about? Mostly, um, there's a few that are visible. For example, in Coliseo, we, we are renovating the VIP lounge. Mm-hmm. That's something that people will see. Uh, mm-hmm. We created a, an outdoor terrace at okay. the Coliseo, so the, there will be a space, which we didn't have before, where people will be able to go out and have that, that. contact with the nature mm-hmm. and uh, with the outdoors. The other projects were projects that people probably won't see, and, and they're improvements on our HVAC system, oh. improvement on our, our, on our on our ceiling, on the catwalk, mm-hmm. and more of infrastructure type of repairs that um, people that come in may, may, may not notice. They may not notice, but they'll feel it. I mean, better air conditioning is certainly... Yeah, they'll feel it, <laughs> and, 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 and it will extend life mm-hmm. to, the, to the venue because mm-hmm. all these are very important in the life cycle of all, all our vital equipment. Now, what about Antiguo Casino? Because I had interviewed um, Coral. Coral, right? And she had told me this was back in, let me look it up because I don't want to make a mistake. This was back in um, late 2018. We were talking about what was going to happen um, in 2019 and 2020. And she mentioned at the time that they were being, they were investing to um, condition the facility, which is historic and beautiful to be able to use it more for uh, corporate events because it's traditionally used for weddings, right? Correct. So what she was saying at the time is that the, the strategy was to fill the calendar, the days that weren't being used for weddings, to fill those days with corporate events. So, you know, let's look at ni- t- late 2019 and all of 2020, what happened? I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it may have, you know, held back those plans, right? Yeah, the, that, the strategy we had, we, we want, obviously, the Antiguo Casino has become a very popular wedding sp- but so mm-hmm. very popular. Uh, if we look at a calendar back in 2019, it was very difficult to get to get uh, a date. A she date told unless me, you remember. wanted to get married on a Sunday, maybe. <laughs> right. Um, but mostly Fridays and Saturdays are the big wedding days. So we wanted to fill the calendar and we wanted to promote um, corporate events for Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursdays. Mm-hmm. Um, at that time, after Maria, we we noticed that a lot of our wedding clients did not want to sign if we didn't have a power generator ah. because of the effect of, right. you know, our, our power infrastructure mm-hmm. of um, the power company. Sure. Uh, so we, one of the large investments was to purchase and to install. We kind of finished that major project um, somewhere at the beginning of 2020. So now we have a full, full power generator so you know the lights go out and the system and fails mm-hmm. it'll be transparent for for all, uh, all our visitors and that was something important also for corporate events so that was one of the major uh, repairs antiguo casino is a 105 year old building so there's a lot of upkeep uh, a lot of maintenance maintenance right. uh, we we were doing redoing the re, the roof mm-hmm. still uh, repairs that were way back from maria the interiors the 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 doors, the glass. Yes, and I remember. And they have very particular needs because our, our glass, we just can't put anything there. So we have to go to the culture, uh, Instituto de Cultura, mm-hmm. the Puerto Rican Culture um, Institute, yep. Institute, and ask for permission to do most of these repairs. Okay. So, uh, so did you get them done? Did yeah, you, yes. they're, they're still in, pro- in, oh. in progress. We, okay. we, we're, we'll probably mostly, um, with most of those projects, will be completed by this summer. Okay. So uh, the Antiguo Casino as well will be in um, prime conditions. And hopefully we won't get struck by another hurricane. Oh, hopefully. The types of Maria. Okay. So why don't we look ahead? What's left of 2021? And if you dare to venture 2022 for, you know, entertainment venues in Puerto Rico, the Coliseum, the, the Music Hall. I mean, I think we have we have the infrastructure, right? We just need for the conditions to be right again. Yeah, we, we've had... In when we compare ourselves to other um, destinations, 
we, we've had a rough time. I mean, COVID was worldwide, but we've had the hurricanes, uh, particularly Maria, the, the, the earthquakes, uh, and a lot of other situations, the political um, situations mm -hmm. in the summer of 2019. And we've had others that when you're talking about projection of a destination, they, they affect on how people look at um, the um, bankruptcy of the government. These are all things that groups look at and the, that worry them. So we've had it a lot on our plate to deal as a destination. Now, as we look forward, it's optimism. Um, the, there's one factor that's really going to make a difference, and that's a game changer, is the Distrito T-Mobile. Uh -huh. T-Mobile, uh, in front of the convention center, uh, entertainment complex like no other. I mean, this is comparable to anything that you may find around the world. Right. Um a mix of restaurants, uh, the Coca-Cola Music Hall. The zip line. The zip line that goes <laughs> yeah. right in between. The, mm -hmm. They're completing a line now that goes from um, the, the city mobile to the convention center mm. and back. So um, with this additional um, offering that we have, um, the Puerto Rico as a destination is, is going to be defined as before the Cito de Mobile and after. Okay. Or in that sense, it's going to be actually before COVID and after COVID. But um, it's a game changer for the destination. Yeah, the district. And, and, you know, the fact that they're already opening restaurants, you know, gradually, mm -hmm. you know, it kind of sets the stage for what what's to come, right? So, so all these restaurants, they converge into a, a plaza. central plaza called mm -hmm. Plaza Popular. People didn't see that plaza till a few months ago when 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 Lupe Reyes, the Mexican mm -hmm. restaurant, was open. Now Sazon is open and La Central is open. And so people are star it. started starting to come into the Plaza Popular and mm -hmm. actually experience it. So there's an, now a lot of buzz, much more than there was a few months ago. Listen, I heard over the weekend there were people trying to get to the restaurants and there were three-hour wait times. Correct. So um, people are going. They're actually, yeah. you know. They, they've had a great response. Um, and... The food is very good, and the ambience that you're in is even better. So that mix is unparalleled. Mm -hmm. and, um, and for us, when we target groups and conventions, that's a major um, part of what we, we, we sell because when groups and conventions are done at the end of the day, at 3 or 4, when all the sessions break and, and the day finishes... Yeah, they want to go have a beer. What happens <laughs> after is mostly the part that... Uh, everyone remembers is where the major business deals are done, where the major relations are created. It's after. It's, it's not doing the convention. And let's not forget the Aloft is also open, right? The Aloft, the hotel, 177 so. rooms, mm -hmm. additional rooms that we, we need at, mm -hmm. in our district area. So this is going to give um, the groups an additional um, space to have meetings uh, uh, during, to have special events, and after the day breaks to... To have that entertainment part and if you look at what major destinations have done um in in, in the conventions and the group meetings uh sector las vegas miami and orlando they, they've done an amazing job of complementing that type of business setting with entertainment and it's that, kind of a must it's right? it's a must yeah. it's a must and and obviously as a destination um we knew that we had to have additional elements uh, to be competitive. We, 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 when we look at Puerto Rico as a destination for conventions and meetings, we're very um, relatively new. We, mm -hmm. we had a convention center in 76, closed in 95. So we, we, we're relatively newcomers, not newcomers, we have a lot of experience, but we're a destination that a lot of people are are, are recognizing at, now. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and I wonder, I mean, does that have anything to do with the DMO, with Discover Puerto Rico also taking on, you know, the promotion of Puerto Rico as a convention and a, as an ideal place absolutely. to hold conventions? Are you working with them? Yeah, we work with them closely because we, mm -hmm. we obviously we target the groups that are going to, the, they, they have the responsibility of Puerto Rico as a whole, mm -hmm. but when they are targeting business for the convention center, we are right with them uh, hand in hand, uh, helping them target and, uh, and um, lure these um, groups to come to Puerto Rico. You know, you mentioned the word optimistic, you know, optimism, and that's something that has been repeating recently um, among executives and the government. I, there was a, um, a convention last week, uh, Chamber of Commerce, um, and they spoke of the optimism that they feel 
for, you know, now that things are sort of wanting to go back to normal. Why are you optimistic? The pent-up demand that mm -hmm. has been building during these 15, 16 months. Um, people are eager to go out. Uh, in most cases, people have, they have had funds um, at their access uh, yeah, from different sources, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, from federal help or, or local help. Um, and, and entertainment, nothing can um, replace the social interaction, the face-to-face and that, that's basically that's what we're all about. So, from our perspective, and makes, makes, basically most industries are feeling that optimism. But we see it because um, people want to go out; they want to have fun. Um, we provide the, the the main venues for people to come and join. Uh, we those venues are at the disposition of our communities for for gatherings and 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 for social events. So. Um, we we see that 2022 is going to be very very actually right now in the group and convention industry um sector we have nine groups that are committed to puerto rico so, mm -hmm. it's, so it's going to be a solid year and we still have like 15 other groups that are looking at puerto rico okay so that we can so still, there is a pipeline for this year 2022 is, is oh, 2022 gonna, 2022 sure. is going to be for this year it's a very um great story we 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 kept four groups that are going to be here for q3 q4 so okay. we were able to keep the commitment of those four groups very important for the destination and we are able to sign two groups during covid mm. for 2021 which is uh, an amazing feat mm -hmm. one is a gymnastics event that's going to be held in in december okay and this is a tour uh, an event that goes around all the nation and they're going to have a stop in puerto rico okay. and another one is a technology a Lat latam te technology um group Okay. Um, based out of Panama, and they chose Puerto Rico for for the group, and, and that one is signed already. We signed last week, and that's going to bring probably a thousand people. Do you know to the the, island. the economic impact in terms of room nights? Yeah, this uh, between both, we're talking about um, probably five five thousand room nights. That's not bad. between both groups. So, okay. um, and then know, the other four that you had locked down. That yeah, those stayed. are like twenty thousand rooms um, okay. between all of them. So we 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 maintain those, which was very important, and we did it with constant communication. Uh, we, we had two main um, selling points, and one is Venue Shield, which is, are the pro proprietary um, protocols for ASM Global, mm -hmm. which are being used in in all our venues across five continents, so over three hundred and twenty venues, and Besides um, Venue Shield, we wanted to make sure that uh, we had another additional um, um, certification that would make our customers yeah, feel, thing. you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> AS, uh, ASM has Venue Shield, but we wanted a third party to validate that what we are doing was with under the best um, practices and guidelines in the whole world. So um, we got certified, all the four venues in Puerto Rico, we got the GBAC Star, Facil Star Facility Certification. Okay. This is uh, from the Global Bio-Risk Advisory Council. So what does that mean in, in you know, rice and beans? That means that, that, that a third party validated that all the protocols and measures that we use to prepare before, during, and an after event are comparable with the top practices in the world. Th this is a certification that um, Staples Center has Mm -hmm. that the O2 in London has, that um, major hotel chains have, that the major airports have. So basically, this is a, a stamp or a seal of approval from... So people should feel safe. People should feel safe. Okay. People with a GBAC star facility, that's uh, a seal that uh, anywhere that you see that is you're coming into a place where management understands. And one of the key messages that management understands the importance of, of providing a safe... Um, setting mm -hmm. for 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 um, for visitors. So mm -hmm. we we it, it took us many months, about six to eight months, and it was right during the um, during the darkest part of COVID where mm -hmm. we decided to do this. So we had to sell the idea of you know we need funding for this. This mm -hmm. the certification costs, um, and we want to do it for the four venues. So you, did it for you the know four our venues. our ownership, which is the Puerto Rico Convention Center District Authority, they. They saw 
uh, the value in that, and they assigned in a moment where we are closed, they assigned the funding so we can get those certifications. Okay. So 2022 is also looking okay. Very good. Okay. Very good. And for, for 2022 for concerts, we're looking at a lot of um, a lot of big, big international, big international <laughs> um, uh, names. Okay. Um, Tours that we're, we're, we want to bring back to Puerto Rico. Uh, one of the important things for Coliseos, we, we want to bring back some variety in the programming. Mm -hmm. For Which the, means what? For the last two years, it's just um, besides we've been we've done very well with reggaeton, and uh, obviously mm -hmm. it's it's a, a product that the people demand, mm -hmm. and we understand that. But I think there's space for bringing in other acts. For example, when Phil Collins came. Three that years ago, major. it was a major success, and I think there's room for more acts like that. Yes. And uh, we are targeting them, and we are talking to producers, and, and we are letting them know that it's our interest. Uh, we're going to have sports. Mm -hmm. um, you've had basketball. You've had tennis. You've had all sorts exactly. of things. Exactly. Um, we, we'll, we'll have, um, we'll announce uh, soon a um, uh, uh, partnership with sports. So okay. um, I, I think it's important for there to be a, a, a great mix and programming, so that includes family shows, mm -hmm. which we have. We have the Disney on Ice. We have the Monster Truck. Um, so we're going to keep those in our portfolio. We want to keep the the. There's some international stars that always come mm -hmm. to the Coliseo. We want to add on that. Mark Anthony in December. Mark Anthony in December. <laughs> some are, 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 are you know already iconic um, dates for the Coliseo, mm -hmm. and we want to bring the larger shows mm -hmm. and uh, for but, example. But the larger ch shows could be a challenge with the, you know, restrictions on the capacity. Correct, but we're targeting these for 2022, oh, okay. 2023, but for we example. Don't know. I mean, that's the thing. So I know that that's something that mm -hmm. you must have in the back of your mind, right? Yeah, yeah. but the, the, the tours are back. I mean, tours okay. are already announcing dates. So for example, I mean, Bruno Mars is something mm -hmm. that's on top of our list. Uh, mm -hmm. Coldplay. Oh, well. Uh, I'll be saving my money for those. <laughs> Because I don't do reggaeton, so. <laughs> so what 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 we're doing is we, we want to let the producers know that we're, we're on board, that we, we want these shows to come and, back. And that's important because I know that producers also took a major hit. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. I was speaking to one the other day who was saying, listen, you know, if I don't get the assistance from the SBA and the government mm -hmm. or whatnot, I can pretty much call it a day and go home. Yeah. Because they took a major blow. Major blow. I mean, it's 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 been like that across the globe mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and here in Puerto Rico I mean you know there, there, there's there, it has been significant impact I mean millions and millions of dollars yeah. of economic loss and it's too bad it's too bad really and and the thing is that the bottom line is that Puerto Ricans love to go to concerts and to shows and to entertainment that's part it's, of it, life it's part of our culture yeah we, so it runs through our veins and, and that's we we are one of the major um, destinations for artists i mean artists love coming here because they they get tested here they get tested mm -hmm. they they <laughs> the, the energy they receive from the public is very special opposed to other places they go to so i mean a lot of people want to come and we some of these are um it takes a lot of um planning and coordination to get a lot of these bigger mm -hmm. tours to come to puerto rico but but it's uh, it's it's one of our priorities and uh we'll 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 we'll, we'll have We'll have some of them coming coming back because we've had a lot of major shows at Coliseo. Oh yeah, I mean Kiss, Absolutely. Rolling Stones, Madonna. I mean, you name it. We've had um, we've had a lot of the big names come in, and, and, and we want them to keep coming back. So on that note, I think we'll we'll wrap this up for now. But um, I appreciate your time and and all the information, and and you know, hopefully, this is the beginning of the end of this disruption, the latest disruption, right? And we can see entertainment and group business come back to life. I truly believe so. So thank you so much for your time and important for the public to uh, to listen to um, that they'll be having inter live entertainment soon. And there's a lot of uh, cool things uh, being planned for the upcoming years. Well, and at News Is My Business, we'll definitely keep you posted. So thank you so much. Thank you. Appreciate it. This episode of Dollars and Cents was brought to you by Liberty Puerto Rico, RSM Puerto Rico, Oriental and Amy Taylor voiceovers. <laughs>